clean, high-quality water is important for ensuring the prosperity of the city of Mankato. Mankato's water is pulled from several shallow and deep depth wells in Land of Memories Park. The wells are built on an elevated platform to prevent flood water from entering the wells. The well water is drawn from the Mount Simon Aquifer. The water in the aquifer has been underground for hundreds of years. The Mount Simon Aquifer provides almost all of the water for southern Minnesota. The water is then pumped from the wells to the Mankato Water Treatment Plant near Sibley Park. The water treatment plant was built to treat up to 12 million gallons of water each day. However, the plant is designed to be expanded as the city grows. The city draws the majority of its water from shallow wells to help conserve water in the Mount Simon Aquifer. An added benefit of the shallow wells is softer water, which is easier on appliances that use water. After entering the treatment plant, the water is pumped into large water softening reactors. Lime sludge is used to raise the pH of the water. The process reduces water hardness while also removing dangerous elements that may be present in groundwater. The used lime sludge is then dried using a large press. The dried lime is hauled away from the plant and is reused by farmers to help improve soil. CO2 is then added to the softened water to lower the pH in a process called recarbonation. The water is then filtered through an ultrafiltration membrane. The pores of the filtration membrane range in size from 0.1 to 0.001 microns. Ultrafiltration only removes high molecular weight substances, making it ideal for removing potentially dangerous bacteria and viruses. The ultrafiltration system is kept at a constant pressure of 50 psi. The plant's filtration system is nearing the end of its effective lifespan and is needing to be repaired more frequently as a result. Repairs are needed on the filtration membranes one to two times a month. Fluoride, chlorine, and phosphate are then added to the water. The fluoride is added to improve the dental health of the city's residents. The chlorine helps to kill any bacteria that was not caught in the filtration system. The phosphate is used to improve the clarity and overall quality of the water. The treated water is then pumped into the city's reservoir system, ready to be distributed to homes and businesses in the city of Mankato. The city of Mankato has five reservoirs and two elevated water towers with a combined water capacity of 11 million gallons. Mankato's water distribution system is gravity fed eliminating the need for costly pumps. Water distribution pipes range in diameter from 4 to 36 inches, but most are 8 inches in diameter. The majority of the city's water mains are made out of PVC, cast iron, and ductile iron. There are still several lead pipes in the city's water distribution system, but the lead pipes are replaced whenever road work takes place near the water main. A buildup of scale and rust in the remaining lead pipes keeps most of the lead from entering the water supply. In the event of a water main break, the city has 5,427 valves that can be used to isolate sections of the water distribution system so repairs can be made. The valves are tested by the city once every five years. A broken water main is repaired by wrapping a stainless steel sleeve around the break, sealing the leak. Water enters homes through smaller pipes branching off the water main. The water is then used by the residents. Used water is then drained into the city's sewer system along with rainwater and surface runoff. Water from the sewers flows into the wastewater treatment plant using the force of gravity. The wastewater treatment plant serves the Mankato North Mankato metropolitan area. After arriving at the plant, the water is screened for large objects that could damage pumps used in the facility. The water is then fed into the grit removal facility where small particles like dirt and sand are removed. These particles are removed to protect the facility's pumps. After grit removal, the water is pumped into the primary clarifiers. Heavy waste settles to the bottom of the clarifier and is moved to the center of the clarifier using scrapers. Lighter substances like oil float to the top of the water and is removed with the surface skimmer. 
The water is then pumped into the facility's four aeration basins. The aeration basins are large pools of water that are heavily oxygenated to grow a population of aerobic bacteria. The bacteria break down the waste in the water and also remove ammonia and other compounds present in the water. The water can spend several weeks in the aeration basins before we're moving on to the next step of the tre treatment process. After aeration, the water is pumped into the secondary clarifiers. The secondary clarifiers operate identically to the primary clarifiers using scrapers and skimmers to remove waste present in the water. The water leaving the secondary clarifiers has little to no solid waste present in it. Water from the secondary clarifiers is moved into the reclamation facility where chemicals are added to neutralize the phosphorus present in the water. If it was not removed, the phosphorus would cause large algae blooms in the Minnesota River, which would disrupt the natural ecosystem. Some water from the reclamation facility is reused by local power plants to cool generators. In addition to saving the power plant money, this practice helps to lower demand for water from the Mount Simon Aquifer. The water is then treated with so sodium bisulfate. This compound neutralizes chlorine found in the water, which can be harmful to the animals and plants that live in the river. After this process is completed, the treated water is pumped into the Minnesota River, ending the journey of Mankato's water.